what I think guys struggle to understand with maybe women who indulge in this life, like, do they not think that nothing comes for free? Some guys, I feel like they're very naive when they date girls. And I actually say this, this is something women should be conscious of with mm. men. If a woman's with a man who's very desirable and let's say he's been with many women, right? He's developed an appetite for yeah. sexual variety, which means he is more likely to cheat mm. on you. Yo guys, welcome back to another episode on my channel. I'm sitting in this spot, which means, which means, I have a great conversation lined up for you today. You know, on this channel, we like to talk about all things dating and relationships and seeing what we can do to attract the kind of person we want. So without further ado, please welcome back to the show, Sukena. Hello. How Thank you, doing? you for having me back. It's a pleasure to have you back. Listen, she is a guest favorite. You know, a lot of you guys love bringing her on. Sometimes we have some heated debates, oh. um, but we actually, <laughs> but a lot of time we build a bridge through yeah. understanding and that's yeah, what we're yeah. all about. No, I love this show. I love coming on here. We have the best chats. Um, and it's, I always feel like I leave the show learning a lot about men, okay. which is great. That's what we love. I, actually, it's <laughs> funny. Um, it's actually, cause we've had, I've had a few people be like, every time you've come back on, mm. you're, just how you think about certain things has shifted yeah. slightly. People have said that to me as well. It's like, um, someone said to me, it's like, it's really fascinating watching your sort of your journey, journey. Like <laughs> when I first began. She's got her own character arc. <laughs> She's got her own character arc. We love it. We love it. Yeah, no, but I, I love, you know, getting to know like, you know, what men want and things like mm. I think it's interesting because I feel like we, we're fed lies as young girls growing up disney yeah. channel and all that stuff and it's like it's really good to just sit with a man and be like right how this is, how is, is how it, it is this, is, how it this is. is what we like this is what we want and i love that so true so true well, you know how we like to start so yeah. tell us your age or age range mm -hmm. and one thing a guy should know about you if you want to take you on a date okay uh well i'm 28 um and what should a guy know about me well i like eccentric things you mm. know i'm not like a black and white person i'm not like a very i hate using the word basic but i'm not really basic like mm. i'm far from basic yeah i want you to really put thought into the date so you know this about me i love the theater very true i love like the arts so if someone took me on a date to like i don't know moulin rouge mm. tint, cabaret i really want to see that show um yeah something like this i would be like yeah Okay. Extra, extra points for you. Cool. We'll take that. We'll take that. You just mentioned about kind of, you know, sitting here, getting mm -hmm. to know what guys think and stuff, because a lot of narrative in the media maybe doesn't give the best guidance for women. Yeah. Right. Now, originally, would you say it's fair to say that you weren't as receptive to having this conversation or receiving certain truths? And now you are like, how, how's, what's made you more kind of open to it? hearing things from a different perspective um do you know what i feel like i don't really know i i like i i obviously i'm the type of person i have my own thoughts and my own of course you know, everybody has their own outlook on life and but i'm i've always been a very sort of curious person mm. always want to find out things that's why i became a journalist yeah. you need to have that natural curiosity yes um and so i always feel like we can learn from other people mm. you know we can always learn we can always improve we only human at the end of the day we're not we're not going to be perfect so Very i'm true. all about self-improvement i'm really big on self-improvement mm -hmm. i'm you know i'm trying to heal without getting into it like childhood traumas things yeah. like that I really want to be committed to being the best version of myself. That's basically what it is. So like I wake up every day striving to be a better person than I was yesterday. Yeah. So relationships are obviously a big thing for me. You know, at some point I obviously want to settle down and be a wife and build a family. Yeah. And if I'm going to do that, I want to make it right. I want to give my all. Yeah. And there's a lot of things I don't know. Like, you know, sometimes mm. we grow up and maybe we didn't have the best representation of what a healthy, loving marriage was. Yeah, good and point. And that's something that I'm now having to kind of teach myself. And discover, and I'm yeah. having to unlearn those toxic traits and styles of communicating. I'm like, oh, that's toxic. I shouldn't do that. Interesting. I check myself. Like I'm so self-aware, it's crazy. Like <laughs> I really am, it's crazy. Like I'll be getting in my weird moods. I'll get triggered because we're humans. We get triggered. Of course. And I'll have to check myself and I'll be like, 
And I even announce it. I'm like, I'm getting triggered. I'm getting triggered. <laughs> and I let people know. Like I let my partner know. I let my friends know. I let my family know. And that's what it's about. We're never yeah. going to be perfect. Yeah. You know, healing's a journey. Yeah. So you might true. wake up tomorrow and you might feel great. And then the next day you feel like, oh, I'm back to square one. Yeah. And that's just how it's going to be. And that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So very true. for me being on these podcasts and speaking to, especially men, like just being around men and hearing their thoughts, mm. it's really opened up my mind to like what men really want and, and how I want to be with my husband in the future and things like that. So yeah. I think it's always great to learn about these things. We're not taught these things in school, you know, mm, yeah, movies 100%. don't tell us this. We're just told, Prince Charming's going to come knocking on your door and just whisk you away. And that's yeah. so far from reality. So true. It's so true. And I think I think the main reason is because guys have to learn very quickly because generally guys are the pursuers. Yeah. Men, we have to learn very quickly. We have to understand what women want mm. if we are going to get women because generally the initial door is the woman saying yes or no. Yeah. Right? Whereas I think the experience a lot of women have, especially if they're like very attractive or whatever, if they live the high life, which we're gonna to touch into today, mm. they don't have to understand men and they can still get quite far with some men purely because yeah. they're attractive. Yeah. And it's only when they get to a certain point in their life where maybe they're not getting the same kind of attention as they used to, they're not getting the same kind of options, they're not getting the same kind of offers from men mm. that they, they're kind of forced to either recognize and be like, right, am I going to try and understand men now? Cause it clearly, I didn't actually understand what they wanted yeah. before. Yeah. Or they're like, oh, there are no good men around or men are trash or whatever. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And you know what I, I, you know, I always say this to my friends who was, I have, by the way, none of my friends are in relationships. Interesting. So yeah, none of them, like not, I haven't got any friends. I'm not, I haven't got friends who are like, oh, you're coming to my engagement party or anything like that. I've just like, all my friends are all single. Right. And whenever they come to me with, for advice, I always tell them like, sometimes you need to look within. Mm. Like it's so easy to just go, men are trash. I'm done. I'm going to have a hot girl summer. Yeah. But sometimes you actually need to really look within yes. and figure out why are you attracting these men? Because there's always a reason, mm. you know, there's always a reason like, why are you allowing people like that into your life? What is mm. it about your personality or, you know, there's a wound there, right? Yeah. There's a wound. And there's a reason why you're allowing people like that to come into your life. Maybe you have lack of boundaries. Maybe you have lack of self-esteem. I don't mm. know, but figure it out and try to dig deeper. And yes. I feel like if you put that energy into really bettering yourself, you will attract that partner that you want to be with. Yeah, Because 100%. that's what I did for so many years. I was a bit lost. Like, yeah. I wasn't sure, like, I don't know, you're kind of, when you're young, you're sort of like, you just go for looks. Yeah. You know, looks is a big thing for women. You yeah, know? yeah. More so today than before, I'd say. Yeah. Because like, we live in a social media. Yeah. If a world. guy's good looking, he's, you know, tall, whatever, like, goes to the gym, you're like, oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really like asking questions. I wasn't finding out who this person was, what's his morals, what's his values. Yeah. I would just be like, he's good looking. Oh, okay. He has a job. Great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so it takes time to really learn like what you want, how you want to be in life. Like what, who's this person? Like, mm. what do they look like? Yeah, of course. What are their interests? Do their values align with your values? These yeah. things are so important. And I feel like people don't want to ask questions because it's difficult. Like mm. it's difficult and uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's true. almost like nowadays it just everybody just wants a quick fix to things it's like so true so true what would you say is the like what would you say is the biggest thing you've learned about how you are with men mm. right that you feel has really helped you kind of have that kind of relationship that you want mm. that so many women are looking for okay well the first thing that really just springs to mind is i used to be very high hyper independent okay um, and so what I mean by that is that I was afraid to let someone do something for me, if that makes mm, sense. Like yes. I was, I, it's almost like I don't trust someone. I'm like, I'll pick the restaurant. Mm. I'll pick this because no one knows me better than me. And it's like, I, I didn't realize that I was actually not allowing the person to show me what they bring to the table or what they Good could point. do for me. Yeah. And then I was getting frustrated. Not only was I getting frustrated at him, but I was getting frustrated at me because 
I was like, oh, I'm always picking these guys. But really, <laughs> it was because I was not fully in tune with my feminine energy. Mm. I just sort of, my whole life, I'd always just sort of worked hard. I was always very confident, always knew what I wanted to do from a very young age. Yeah. And I was, when I go and meet people and date, I would always lead with that. I'd be like, no, well, I'm independent and I'm this and I've worked hard and I'm successful. Mm. And I didn't realize that was actually, one, it was either making me attract men who were a little bit weak-minded, yep. not fully in their masculine, yep. happy for me to be like that Take with the him. Reins, everything, uh, yeah. yeah and 100%. then I'd be getting frustrated because I'd be like, well, hold on a second, you're not in your masculine, but that's because I'm not in my feminine. Where do you think... I hear that. And I think so many women do lead with their independent career success, yeah. all of that stuff, right? Where do you think that comes from? Is it them trying to prove like, oh, I'm showing you that I don't need you? Hmm. Or is it that I'm showing you these things because it should make me more attractive to you? Like, what is, where does that come from? What is she trying, what is a woman trying to achieve when she leads with her independence, her career success with a man? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I think often it comes from this sort of, this sort of feeling of insecurity. It is, it's an insecurity because okay. somewhere along your journey, you were made to not feel wanted by right. someone or something. I don't know. We could link it back to your childhood, but yeah. maybe you've had a few too many people disappoint you in mm. life or you really liked this guy and he wasn't what you thought he was. You know, people have wounds. Yes. Um, and they carry a lot of baggage and unprocessed emotions that they haven't really worked through. Yeah. So most of the time it is a wound. It is an insecurity. Right. Um, I know because I had it. Mm. I was always just getting disappointed by people. They just were not fitting the brief, Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? And then I'd get mad at myself. So then when I would start going out dating and I say to myself, well, I've got to start again. I would always be like, well, I'm going to go in there and be this like dominant, confident woman. And it's almost like it's a, it's a shield. Yeah. It's a front. Yeah. Because you really deep down you're scared and mm. you don't want to get hurt. Yeah. And so if you go in there with this front and I'm this person and I'm untouchable, it's almost like you think that's going to win the person over. Yes. And it might, it yeah. might win a person over, but it won't always win the right person over. And that's what I was going to say for sure. I think the kind of person in which if you, if you come into a space where you're trying to emphasize, I don't care yeah. about whether you invest in me, not seriously, yeah. because I can just take you or leave you. I think the kind of person who's looking for that reciprocation and looking for that, you know, that value exchange, right. Yeah. Is going to be like, Oh, well, well, in this case, this person doesn't want the value I have to offer yeah. compared to somebody else who's like, hey, I'm actually really it's looking so for this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, I want to touch on the high life because that's going to be topic today. Yes. Right. Ooh, is the high topic. life worth it? So the first thing I want to ask you is what is it about the high life star? When we talk about high life, well, yeah. let me ask you, how do you define a woman living the high life today? The modern <sighs> woman engaging in that? Wow, what a question. Um, the high life. Okay, so the high life is is basically a woman fully taking advantage of all the opportunities around her, mm -hmm. using her beauty, her youth mm. to gain access to things, to whether that's material things, whether that's, I don't know, places, type of people, the level of men that she's dating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's about sort of, receiving things you're 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 just you're receiving whether you're being you know holidays are being booked for you mm. or you know it's it's kind of like you're living this fast high life it's this yes. fast high life it's the fast paced life yeah. um you know it's always very exciting very unpredictable don't know where you're going yeah very spontaneous yes. um have you ever indulged in it yourself no not fully i mean i lived in dubai so okay you know, I, I feel like I that's have, like the epitome of high life in Dubai yeah. for the women over there from what I hear. Yeah, so that's the only kind of experience I can sort of relate to it. Um, right. I lived in Dubai and obviously out there, everything's free. You know, mm. women, uh, you know, I used to go out sometimes and wouldn't even take money. <laughs> Boy, why, why would I if need to only. take money? Everything was for, for free. You everything know? was paid everything's, for. Everything's paid, everything's booked. You just look pretty and you just turn up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and, and that was the reality out there for uh, a lot of girls were just really taking advantage of that. Yeah. Um, 
But I think the high life is, I feel like it has a shell life. It mm. has a shell life. And I, a lot of girls don't like to admit it. Yeah. Um, but it really does. And I feel like nowadays more, there is a lot of competition because you're sort of competing with the young girls now, especially if you're a woman sort of in your late twenties, yeah. mid thirties, and you're still chasing this high life. Yeah. You've got like a whole new generation coming up and so true. They are getting the high value men. You it's know. true. It's true. Because so, those guys aren't yeah. those guys aren't inviting you to these bars and yachts because they actually care about who you are. No. It's kind of you know, they're sexually attracted to you and they yeah. kind of want something from you in that yeah. sense. Yeah. What do you think it what is it about the high life, this lifestyle, this fast, mm. high life paced lifestyle for yeah. so many young women that is so attractive to them? What is the what is the temptation that it provides for them? <sighs> Well, I feel like it's the people see it as an easy way. Mm. It's an easy way. It's a like, it's a way of you not having to work hard. You know, this soft life that we sure. hear this term, it's a trend now, everyone wants a soft life. Yes. But that is the definition of a soft life where you're just getting everything paid for. You just turn up, you just look pretty. Yeah. You're a woman, you don't need to do anything. Yeah, yeah. And the reason why it's so attractive is because a lot of women don't want to work. Yeah. They don't want to work, they're lazy. <laughs> Times are hard right now. Times are hard. Yeah, times are hard right now, of course. And yeah. but you still have women. That's why we have OnlyFans and things like that. A lot of these girls don't, I've spoken to them. They don't enjoy this job. They hate mm. themselves. Like I did a wow. recent podcast recently, check it out, Blue Sick Show. Blue Sick Show. Um, and, you know, I, I spoke to an OnlyFans model, um, Gemma Lucy, she's lovely, by the way. Um, and she just, I, I was so fascinated by her story because she said that she absolutely hated what she did, but she's wow. got so far deep into it now that she can't get out. And that's yeah. what happens to a lot of these girls. As soon as you dabble a little bit into that high life. Yeah. It's dangerous. Yeah. The thing is like, don't they? I know. And I think because of the reality for a lot of men, Mm. in life and because men have to build their value build their yeah. worth in there if if like no one's just going to give something to a guy yeah. like it's not like a woman like, if you're young attractive woman people men will just give you stuff yeah. that's not the case for guys so yeah. our reality very much shapes us that anything we want we have to go out and kill for it yeah but everything has a price yeah and i think guys take what I think guys struggle to understand with maybe women who indulge in this life, like, do they not think that nothing comes for free? Yeah. Like everything has a price. Like you think going into a yacht with this superstar, yeah. right? There's a price attached to that. Just because you're not paying it upfront doesn't mean you're not gonna pay it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I read a quote um, ages ago that just really stuck with me. Yeah. Um, it was, if if you marry for money, you you'll be working for the rest of your life. Mm. And that is such a powerful quote because I know women when I was living in Dubai, I I knew girls who had just sort of got into relationships or married just for the money. They had no connection with this guy, didn't love him. Yeah. But it was just for the money and the security and that life. And they were so, one of the most unhappy people I've ever met. So when you say like when they have they're- all kinds of problems. Like So when you say they'll be working, then as in you'll be working on the relationship for the rest of your life or what do you mean? It's almost what like, I don't, it's kind of, you know, up to interpretation, really. It's how sure. you want to sort of understand it. But the way that I sort of see it is it means that you're never truly going to be happy. Mm. You're always almost going to be working, always fighting, always yes. struggling. It's it's not like, oh, I've just married someone and I, I'm so happy now. Yeah, um, yeah. And that was... That was what I noticed with these girls. They were just not happy. They had all kinds of issues. Yeah. You know, it was like because it it messes with your your, your mental health as yeah. well and and um, oh god i could go into this for ages but like dubai is just i'm sorry but it's just such a dark world yeah and i don't yeah. want anyone to come for me dubai's great i love the you know, i love it as a holiday <laughs> i think i'm going, I think I'm going there early next year like yeah <laughs> no but in, in all in all seriousness um dubai is a beautiful place right yeah and it's a dating culture that it's just unfortunately what's happened out there is the way that it's been promoted or how it's been advertised yeah is that it's this super rich glitz like millionaires billionaires playground whatever yes and for that reason a lot of people are in debt 
trying to live a wow. life that they are really not living. They can't afford to live that life. Damn. You know? And is this is this the men who are in debt? Because yeah. obviously over there, it's kind of like, as a woman, yeah. you just show up and the guys have to it's pay for everything. It's the men in debt. Damn, It's that's the men in debt. Mad. It's just, it's people trying to keep up with this lifestyle, unfortunately, but they can't afford it. Yeah. Um, and what's happening is the girls out there, they're taking full advantage of men. Of course. They are rinsing men. Like I, I feel no like tomorrow. <laughs> I feel like especially especially women who aren't from there. Yeah. Like women from other countries, like the Western world or whatever, right? When they go yeah. there, because they've come from a world where they probably would have had to hustle to some degree yeah. to use what they've got to get ahead. Yeah. And then they come here and these men have all the money, but none of the intelligence or none, and have That's no it. streetwise. Yeah. They're just getting played so they easily. Are. Absolutely. That is and, actually and mad. The, yeah, it's mad, honestly. And, and the fact is like, I knew people that had gone there with like no money. <laughs> what guys no girls i knew of girls course. who had just sort of gone there like just randomly like left say like the uk and gone to live in dubai and had no money and just wow. but they knew that they were gonna be okay yeah because they know there's men out there who's gonna finance their who's lives gonna pay for them wow what's what's the question you want to ask today i would love to, to know um when a, as a man if you came across a girl who had maybe lived, let's not say lived, but she may have- Dabbled. Dabbled in that, um, you know, life. Yes. How would that make you feel? And would that put you off her? Be just a mm, hundred. Complete, okay, good question. Yeah. Uh, so, Bearing in mind, she's like ticking all the boxes. You yeah. really feel like this big spark with her. You're yes. like, this is like, I like this girl. So it, it can go one of two ways. It can either be a super green flag or a super red flag. And I'll say mm -hmm. why. Uh, if we're saying, let's say we're going from the point that she's dated a lot of people, like these superstars in this high life or whatever. Now it can be a red flag because it could be that that's what she expects. And the reason she's now coming to me is because she couldn't lock down one of those billionaires. Right. In that sense, right? Because I believe that, I believe it's always best, a relationship works best when the woman feels like she's gotten the top guy that she wants, mm. right? So in that sense, I will never be that for her. So it can always be like, and I, I had- Hard pill to swallow. It's true. And yeah. I had, you know, I talked to um, some Josh Brocklebank, who was on Love Island recently. I asked mm. him this question. I was like, what if she dated Cristiano Ronaldo? He was like, no chance. How am I going to compare to Cristiano Ronaldo? Wow. Do you know what I mean? It's really right? interesting that you guys think like that. Of course, like because every guy wants to be the best that she's ever had. Right. right. And I think for a relationship to work, in her eyes, he has to be her top choice, right? Mm. That could be, that's the red flag. Especially if it's okay. because she couldn't hold on to one of them. So now she's right. here, right? Okay. Cause like you said, all of that has a shelf life. Yes. So if she's coming to me after that shelf life has come, mm. I'm like, nah, I'm not your consolation yeah. prize. Right. The green flag is if she's still in a point in, let's just talk very frankly, if she's still young, attractive and stuff where mm. she's still attracting these men, but she's choosing not to, yeah, it's because she doesn't choose a man for money. And that's a massive green flag. I like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it, it's very contextual mm. in that sense. And it depends. It really depends on why she's not indulging that life. Yeah. Is, is she not indulging that life because she can't anymore? Mm. Or is she not indulging in it because she's realized actually what I'm looking for, I can't find here. Right. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Yep. I hear that. What if, um, what if you found out, let's say you met a guy and he was like, super rich and super wealthy and stuff. Cause I just actually, someone who's just on the show just before you came, she was like, I, she said that would turn her off because she mm. knows what that lifestyle is. Okay. Cause they're always around these gorgeous girls, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Um, but obviously it means he can provide a certain lifestyle that yeah. less than 1% of men can. Right. So yeah. if you met a guy and by the end of the day, you found out, <laughs> say literally you found out he was like a billionaire. Mm. Would that make him more attractive? Like would that, turn you on more or how would that play in your eyes? Do you know what? In in all honesty, it wouldn't make him more attractive to me. Mm. Um, because. No, I mean, a little bit, come on. A guy's like, hey, I can fly out my private jet to Italy tomorrow. I've, I've had guys like that. Okay. I, and I honestly, I turn them down. Like my friends would always be like, oh my God, you're so crazy. Like, why'd you turn that guy down? He's in a private jet. And I'm like, 
I can't explain it. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but mm. if I'm not connected to you, for me, it's the connection. It's the connection. It's the energy. And yes. it's also who you are as a person. Like I really look at the character, the, the, the morals, like what's your moral com compass like, of you course. know, that's so important. I don't care if you're flying in a private jet. I really don't care. Yeah. I don't mind flying economy. I really don't. Hey, you heard so it, I man. I get the window seat. I'm I think this time last year, I don't know if she would have said that, you know, I don't know if she would have said <laughs> <Gross>. that. <laughs> um, here's the thing. This is the way I see it. Yeah. If the guy is great, and I feel really connected and happy with him and safe with him. Yes. And then he so happens to be a billionaire. Oh, amazing. It's a bonus. Huge Brilliant. bonus. Yeah. We're going to have a great life bonus. and he'll take me, you know, on first class, whatever, private jets. But it's not the end all be all for me. And it's not sure. the, it's not like the criteria because I had been with men like that. I had met, met men like that when I was living in Dubai even here like mm. when I was in my dating phase I would go on dates with people like that and for some reason I was just like not impressed mm. and I I try to sort of figure out why because when I would tell my friends or something they'd be like but he's a billionaire mm. he's on like Forbes list mm. he's you know and I'm like I don't care mm. like I generally don't care and, yeah. and I've not even like I'm not even the type of person who's like come from money or like generational wealth or anything like that you know my my parents were Moroccan immigrant parents they came to this country yes. they worked really hard to try and give me and my brother a great life yeah 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 and I had a normal upbringing I went to a normal secondary school yeah so it's nothing to do with that I think it's just who I am as a person and and I guess my values like yeah do you think how much of it do you think is part of it because you've tasted that already so it's kind of like it's kind of like when you have an abundance mm. when you have a level of abundance with money is when you realize money really isn't everything right. but if you don't have that if you're struggling I money you is mean. everything yes do you I know see what, what I'm mean. saying yes and I met girls who had come from basically poverty right right coming right. to Dubai to build a life for herself, to hustle. And I don't judge anyone, you know, yeah, like you're, that's your hustle. And like, you got to do what you got to do. And and I understand why those girls would probably latch onto the guy. But I think right. because my whole life, you know, I lived quite a pampered life. You know, my parents mm. always gave me what I wanted. I was never left without. Yeah. Um, I lived like a pretty normal childhood. Like, and so it's like a guy who gave me what struggled. I want. I've always had what I want. That's not new yeah. for me. And, and also, and not just that, I think it's my career as well. I think my career was able to take me to a lot of places that yes. a lot of girls didn't get that chance to do because right. obviously what I do for a living, it opens up a lot of doors. I get a lot of access to, you know, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like, I have met so many high profile people. Yeah. I've met so many incredibly successful men. Mm. I've interviewed, I sat down and interviewed politicians, like all kinds of people. Yeah. So just because you're a billionaire, that is not gonna make me go, wow, let's get married. I wanna be with you. I think because I already, I see success. I know success. I'm cultivated. I'm well-traveled. Yeah. I'm very intellectual. You're very acclimatized yeah. to men at that level. So it's yeah. not really like, it's not- I'm it, like, what else are oh, you bringing to me? Bring me something of substance. Yeah, 100%. I want to see that. A hundred percent. And then when I see that and then you're a billionaire, great. And so I'll be very happy. <laughs> do, you do you think for a girl to get to this point yeah. where she's not so swayed by the lifestyle a guy can provide for her, mm. do you think she has to taste it first? Do you see <sighs> what I'm, I'm saying? Gonna I'm going to flip that a little bit. Go for and it. And I'm going to say- she doesn't have to taste it. She has to work on herself and she has okay. to get to a level as a woman where you can look yourself in the mirror and go, I'm really proud of myself. I've been able to create a beautiful life for myself and I didn't need men to do it for me. So I always say to mm. girls, especially young girls growing up now in this generation, dig your heels in deep, especially in your early twenties, make something of yourself. Like mm. just make something of yourself because when you have a career and I know we sit here and we're like, men don't care about career. And it's not about the man. It's no, about, it's about you. for you. It's got to be for you. For you. 100%. Because if it wasn't for my career, I wouldn't have been in the places that I went to. I wouldn't mm. have had access to all the incredible, you know, things and experiences that I've had. And I wouldn't be a, I wouldn't be at a point where 
I can confidently go, I don't care if you're a billionaire, bring something else to the table. Mm, it's I the that. fact that I am so well, what's the word? Like rounded, experienced, educated. Yeah, yeah. experience sounds a bit horrible to men because, <laughs> it, you know, I know they don't like that. That's very triggering. Oh, Mary she's experienced. well experienced. I'm cultivated. I'm yes. well traveled. Seasoned. I'm, yes. I, I, I bring a lot to the table. And so for me, just because someone had a bit of wealth, like he's a billionaire, he's on Forbes, or he's this, like, most of the time it's generational wealth. It comes from your parents. So true. That doesn't impress me. Yeah, people don't realize that. Like most people most people in the upper class, yeah. like 90% of them, it's purely inherited wealth. <laughs> it's, exactly. They, they didn't work exactly. together. Exactly, and that does not impress me one bit because it's yeah. like, that's not gonna show me who you really are. Like, did you go through struggle? Like, mm. you know, what's your story? I like to hear people's story. And it's like most of these men, like they're just rich and they have all this money. And the problem is what's happened is because they have all this money, they don't feel like they need to search within. They don't need to dig deep. They don't need to show the woman who they really are. Yes. Because maybe they don't even know who they are. They're all like point. they're just led with their money. Yeah. And so when they meet a girl like me, for example, they're just like, oh, oh, she doesn't like me. Well, she's not obsessed about me because I've shown her a bit of money. No, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I'm really not. I think I think like, one thing that we sometimes forget to realize is that growth often, the biggest growth comes through adversity. Yes. And when you've inherited so much wealth, et cetera, where everything just comes to you, yeah. you've not really faced that much adversity. So there is no growth that yeah. you've had to you do. You don't really have a story to tell. You what don't have a story. What story are you going to tell us? You don't have an origin story. <laughs> you don't have an origin story. We want stories. Yeah, of course. <laughs> let me um, let me ask you something else. Um, okay, so in that sense, so you know how you were like, oh, if a woman had dated that, mm. someone from that, what would that say to a guy? Yeah. My question to you is, can women go backwards in lifestyle? So imagine a woman dated a guy, let's say for a year and a half, and mm. he was this top level successful guy, or whatever, and it didn't work out because he hadn't worked on himself. Right. Right. She loved the lifestyle and stuff, but who he who he was as a person, mm. she was like, I can't work with this for the rest of my yeah. life. Right. Not right. Can she go from that to an average guy who is the kind of person she wants, but doesn't provide anywhere near the same level of lifestyle that he did? <sighs> wow. Well, that's that's a that's a good question, in and I feel like that's very loaded because the current climate that we're in right now, I think, is very, very hard. Sure. Um, you know, and I and I feel like it's not even enough just to have two people working anymore nowadays. It's like yeah. you got to find all kinds of side hustles and True. ways to bring in multiple sources of income and yeah. Who knows, are we even gonna own our own houses? Like what is going on? Like yeah. it's really hard right now. It's hard you know? times now. Yeah. Um so my answer to that would be, and looking at the current world that we live in right now and mm -hmm. the girls who are coming up in this generation and what they think and yes. just sort of what's out in the world, yep. my my analysis on that is that. I feel like it would be very challenging mm. um, because I just feel like we can't ignore the fact that love is just not enough. Mm. It's just, it's really not. Not Especially, to build a life. No, it's not. No. no and it's, it's not. like, yeah, he's this great guy, but can he really give her the life that she wants? And I, and I feel like that's kind of what it is. Because back in the day, the reason why people used to stay together is because, first of all, we didn't have access to like social media and things like that. So we weren't seeing what Lucy's doing in Lake Como or whatever. Like Very true. it was just like you would meet someone and you'd be so happy and content with that. Yeah. Because you'd be like, yeah, this is it. That's great. Yeah. And you don't have any distractions. I've got a teammate. Yeah. You're just yeah. like, I'm happy. I've found my life partner. Nowadays, it's like people get into relationships, marriages, whatever. And they're constantly comparing people. Yep. They're constantly comparing their spouse to someone else. Yep. You know, oh, but you're not like Cristiano Ronaldo. You're not this, you're not that. Like yeah, it yeah, sounds yeah. silly, but it's that's true. really the mentality of what people are doing right now. They're like, oh, but this girl on TikTok, her boyfriend just gave her 2000 roses and you yeah. don't even want to do anything for me. Yeah. So we're constantly comparing our lives to people that probably don't even live those lives themselves because yeah. social media is fake. Like yeah, it's a it's highlight so reel. Yeah, they only show what you want to see. What so they want the to problem see. that we face now, I feel is that there's just 
far too much out there telling us, no, leave your relationship. The grass is greener on the other mm. side. So my answer to that would be, I think it would be very challenging yep. and it would take a girl, it would take a woman who is probably, you know, really far down in her journey. And like, she's really like, done a lot of self-improvement, yeah. maybe realized like, actually I don't need that. I just need someone who loves me and it would be very challenging. So yeah. I can't say, yeah, she'll yeah. go backwards. I get that. But then I don't want to say no. I get it. But you get what I'm trying to say. I get it. I think, I think you hit the nail on the head yeah. that it's very challenging very. because, well, just because I think just instinctually what women look for, yeah. you know, especially if she's looking for that guy to provide a certain level for her. Yeah. And, <laughs> This sounds so bad and I don't mean it when I say it like this, but when it comes to mating, mate, women are social climbers. Yeah. They mate across and up dominance hierarchies. Absolutely. Right? Yep. You know, when, you know, I've said this before, when, um, and it doesn't work the other way, right? Because mm. when the king marries a, a female peasant, she becomes the queen. Yeah. When the queen marries a male peasant, he doesn't become king. Yeah. He's the queen's husband. So true. Right? Yeah. So it's always been the woman being brought up to the man's status. Yeah. And so if she's been with a guy up here, it almost feels, I think, evolutionary speaking, mm. it feels like she's going backwards, yes. right? Even if she's actually getting more of what she wants and what she looks yeah. for. But I mean, this comes into the point of, you know, sometimes we have, we have to be our own parents yeah. and it's about going, this person, he may not give me what I want, but he gives me what I need. And yes. ultimately having your needs met is more important for longevity than yeah. having your desires met. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's what I think for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me ask something else. Uh, what do you think the pros are in terms of indulging in this high life, in this high lifestyle, this fast paced life? What do you think some of the pros are as a woman? <sighs> well, I think one of the pros is it's opportunities at the end of the day. Very true. And if you're a smart girl and you use those things to your advantage, you yeah. could end up in, you know, really high positions in your life. Like, you know, I know girls who found jobs through people they had dated or, you know, things like that. So yeah. it you could use it as a way of bettering your life if you're really smart. Yeah. Um, so that's one opportun uh, opportunities opportunities and you know getting far in life um and number two you could see it as like just one big life lesson which is kind of what i did mm. um realizing that that life didn't make me happy and those people didn't make me happy yeah. and realizing that actually i wanted more and I was looking mm. for more. And maybe I'm not just this surface level girl, high maintenance. I like this. I like that. There's more to me. Yes. And I had to go through that. I had to maybe date a rich guy or something to know that. Yes. To yeah, know yeah, yeah. that actually your money is not enough for me. I am looking for something more. Mm. So she could use it as a life lesson. Yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, it, it could be like a phase in your journey and it could actually be something that makes you a better person. Because yeah. for me, like that was what it was like when, when I met my partner. Yeah. I knew he wasn't like Cristiano Ronaldo or something like that, but I was so happy because he ticked all my boxes mm. and I was like, it feels right. Yes. It feels right. Yeah. Like he's not a billionaire but I actually don't care yeah. because he's hardworking. He's doing well for himself mm. and he does all the other things and he makes me laugh and he has values yes. and he has a story to tell and he's makes me feel inspired. And, and, and these things I was lacking in the other relationships. I wasn't, yeah. it wasn't connecting. It, it felt sur surface level. It was almost like these people had been used to that life their whole life. Yes. And probably used to girls just throwing themselves at them because they had money. Yeah. That they almost didn't work on themselves. Yeah, of course. It's so true. Yeah. It's so true. And I think, and this is, this is semantics, but there's a reason I'm making this point. I think you're like, oh, I want more than that. And I think it's important to say, I want something different because mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of things that come with that kind of person yep. 
like you said, they lack those things. Yeah. And I'm just saying this because when men hear a woman go, oh, I want more than that. It's like, oh, you want a billionaire and for him to be emotionally intelligent oh, yeah, and yeah, for yeah, him no. to be in yeah, great yeah, shape and for him that. to be sick. Do, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, hundred percent. And it's, it's funny because guys learn this as well mm. with women. It's, but it's not rich women. It's just really attractive women. Yeah. Like, I hear this. My little brother tells me things like this as well. Yeah. yeah. And it's literally, like you said, like if she's a really attractive girl, yeah. whether you're a good person or not, people will throw opportunities at you. Mm. Guys will want to invite you out. Guys yeah. will want to date you, right? Purely because you're young and attractive. And so because of that, she doesn't have to work on her character. Yes. And guys learn. And I think, I think in order for guys to get to a point and maybe I'm biased in this because mm. I think this is my journey. But in order for guys to get to a point that it's not just okay for her to be attractive, that she has to bring something else, I think they have to taste that. And the reason yeah. I say that is I think it's because I think what men look for is so few in their things, mm. but it means they're more significant. And I think a woman's looks are more important to men than a man's money is to women. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. Because like you said, like, I think women have a longer criteria, yes. but it means each of those things absolutely yeah. are less significant. Yeah. But for guys, guys have a very short thing, but it's like, yeah. I have to be attracted to it. That's, yeah. That has to be there. Yeah. And so I think it's only when a guy has, I'm saying generally, obviously, you know, if you've done the work on yourself yeah. and maybe I'm showing that, you know, maybe I did the work on myself, not as early as I could have. Yeah. But yeah, I used to just date girls because they were really attractive. Yeah. And then I realized I was like, rah, there's actually nothing else to you. Yeah. <laughs> That realization just hit And you. I was just like, raw. <laughs> and I was like, you know, like you said, you want someone finding all of this, but yeah. And now, and it's, it's crazy. And uh, maybe I shouldn't disclose this. I'll probably get some hate for this, but even, even if I was dating casually, mm. even if she was attractive, I still, she still had to have something. Yes. I still had to yeah. like her and to often, some degree. Sometimes I feel like you, you probably, cause I've, you know, spoken to guys about this and they say, sometimes they can't even put their finger on it. What's missing with the girl? Yes. And it probably is the thing similar to what I was saying. 100%. But it's just for you guys, it's not that clear yes. and in the face kind yeah, of thing. But 100%. It's, it's a disconnect when you're with the person that you yeah. feel and you're like, wow, you're like, I don't want to say airhead, but it's almost like, is anything there? Like, yeah. And I, I, you know, I'm going to get in trouble with this, but I'm going to say it anyway, just perfect <laughs> example. so real. How I knew... I'm not going to say when. Oh God. Uh, it wasn't recent, obviously, but there was a girl I was involved with, very attractive girl. She's okay. like this Insta model, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And we were having fun and it was, you know, we were being intimate, all of this stuff. I remember one time, like we were intimate and stuff. And after we'd just finished having sex, I should just let that. I was like, I do not like you. Oh no. I was like, I don't. I was like, oh, why God, is she horrible. in my apartment? Why is she in my home? That's horrible. Why am I offering... To do, like, I actually don't like who you are. She was like telling me about something, about this story, about whatever. Yeah. And the way she you. was, her perspective, I was just like, that's just so wrong. And I was like, what, why am I giving myself to you yeah. when I don't even like who you are? Yeah. And that's when for me, I was like, never again. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Cause yeah. like, listen, time is the only non-refundable currency that exactly. we have. Exactly. Yeah. Do you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. You can get money back, you know, money, comes and goes but your time is so valuable yeah um and i'm learning that so much more now that i'm older like i say no to things all the time now yeah. i'm not even given an excuse i'm yeah. not even like i'm just like nah sorry not feeling it 100 percent. i will not do something that i don't want to do yeah yeah 100 percent. what's something else you brought today for us <laughs> i want to wanna know um if if you dated a girl and you sort of found out that Again, she had been in, in this high life. Yes. Is there a part of you that feels like she may have been taken advantage of? Does your hero instinct sort of kick in and you're like, because you, okay, so picture this. She's obviously, you see her, you've probably spent a bit of time with her. Yep. And you're like, okay, this is, this is a really good girl. She's actually a really good girl. She's genuine everything. And then she sort of tells you this. Okay. What are you thinking at this point? Is there a part of you that's going, yeah, she might have been taken advantage of or is it straight judgment? No, like she's one of those <laughs> girls. Be honest, let's just be real because girls want to know this. They want to know course. like, am I going to get judged by the guy for that? Yeah. Because often sometimes people like just end up in things and maybe they didn't even 
want to be in it at first and they just sort of found themselves in like a really toxic environment with right. this with this guy like i don't know okay so if she are you saying if she says that she's just been in his high life or is she saying that she's actually been in like toxic situations because of it so is she actively disclosing that or yeah if she sort of reveals her sort of past to you yeah and it's like you know a, a series of very rich men or mm. you know she's saying things like i was on his yacht and you know things like this what are you thinking at this point because obviously you already have your um view on her already so you sure. sort of made your mind up about her you're like oh my god i can really see myself with this girl she's a really good girl yep. then she tells you that yep is that going to instantly make you think yeah she's just one of them girls write her off mm. or would you actually feel a little bit like there could be a part of this where she was maybe taken advantage of or like she was hanging around with the wrong crowd like yeah we just want to know okay <laughs> um Okay, so I would say if she didn't if she didn't volunteer any experience of her being taken advantage of, I don't think guys would ever think that. I don't think guys would ever think she was there because she didn't want to be. Because wow. guys are like, it's a privilege to be in those circles. Mm. Like girls would be like, yeah, I was in a club with Chris Brown. As a guy, we're only in there because we've reached a certain level of value. Mm. You just got in there because you were cute. So it's just like- My partner always says this to me. It's true. He's always like, you girls just get in for free. And But we know club, so we know true. clubs, like yeah. high-end clubs, they operate yeah. that way. Girls, yeah. you go in for free. Yeah. Like You guys have to buy tables and stuff we or have like to. spend certain amount. Right? And, like, and we can't even just go in there with our guys. We have to go in there with other girls. Yeah. A lot of clubs are like yeah. that. So it's like taking advantage of guys are like, if anything, like you're getting an experience mm. that most men will never- ever experience themselves yeah all paid for yes if anything you're taking advantage of them <laughs> <laughs> you're taking advantage of these Fair wealthy enough. guys who are willing to spend money yeah. on you and you have no intention of having anything intimate with them when you know that's the reason they're inviting you there oh my god that is so crazy like i've just thought about that because you know i you know i used to go to these places in mayfair and things like that like yeah. where a promoter would text me and my friends and be like free dinner tonight come and bring your girls and have fun yeah and i swear to god i'm being so real right now yep. in the beginning when i was younger i didn't know what that was <laughs> <laughs> genuinely i didn't know what that was and it wasn't yeah, until yeah. i went to dubai yeah. and i i had a lot of you know older friends out there yes they would advise me because in dubai it's seen as basically prostitution so like yeah. here we've got the girls being like oh promoters getting us a free table it's not that bad but in dubai it's really frowned upon like it, it's like prostitution yeah so i remember i had my guy friends who used to be like that is so bad cicada they were mm. like you are basically like selling yourself and they when they explained it to me i was so shocked like did you not think i'm basically getting exploited <laughs> you're being exploited because like, let's just be okay like, let me just ask you a real last question yeah. do you think if you were like 10 stone overweight and mm. you didn't take care of yourself you'd be invited there no 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 of course not yeah does any like like yeah and i think for guys it's like how what other reason do you think they're mm. inviting you like, do you think they're inviting you because they look to you and like, oh, she looks like she has a great personality. Yeah. Half the time, these rich <laughs> men, they, they didn't invite you themselves. They've got a guy to find hot girls yeah. to bring to their- I didn't understand that. So when I used to go and sit on these tables, I just thought that the club had organized like a, a girl's night for us. <laughs> I swear to God, I didn't understand that it was another man on the table and we're sitting on his table. Because they so don't funny. talk to you. <laughs> I mean, I so never funny. used to talk to the men, like ever. I'd just be sort of in my little corner with my friends having a free drink or something, you yeah. know? But it's like the men wouldn't really talk. It's so weird because it's like now that I look back on it, I'm like, oh, maybe they were trying to talk, but I just shut it down. Yeah. But And then they're like, what the hell? I paid two grand for this table and this girl won't even talk to me. I and thought she's it was all just drink. part of the vibe. Like restaurant calls yeah. girls in. No, I just. No, no, that, that is so funny. And you know what? I do think there is an element of those rich men doing it because mm. it shows a sign of status. Mm. Because 
everybody, men and women want status. Yeah. And a lot of the time men get status by either being with multiple attractive women, basically how attractive the woman is that he's with Absolutely. and women gain status by how successful the man her man is yeah. that she's with. Yeah. So she's like, oh, well, if I'm with these kind of guys, then I'm up here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's really strange because it's all, <laughs> the way I sort of describe it is, it's a bit of like a placebo effect because mm. the guy is probably nothing special. Yeah. But just because you know what he does, it's almost like that guy instantly becomes attractive to girls in the club. 100%. And I've seen it with my own eyes where they'll like see a footballer on a table yeah. and be like, oh my God, we need to get on his table. We need to get on his table. Yeah. But that footballer might be a really shitty person. And most of the times I've spoken to footballers and they're actually not that nice. Yeah, like, yeah. But because of his status, yeah. the girls are literally like breaking their necks, trying to, trying to go over to there. that table. They're diving in that table. And it's, it's crazy. Like when you see that. Yeah. I've never been one of those girls. Like never really been interested in things like that. Don't, don't know why. Just mm. never really. Bro, with good values, boy. Yeah, I just don't know. I feel like with me, it's more like if I'd met the guy one on one, and his personality really like attracted me. Yeah. Then I'd be really like interested. Yeah, but it, but, but it's when there, it's... you do have a threshold though. Yeah. Let's not pretend like you do have a bit of a threshold. You're like he doesn't have to be all this, but he has to have a little bit of something. Yeah, yeah, of course. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but one thing I was going to say was, I think the best thing that exemplifies how you're like, oh, it's almost the more rich a guy is, the more, the easier it is for girls to fall in love with him. Mm. The Tinder swindler demonstrates this Ooh. massively because he had so many women in love with him. Yes. So many, for them to be giving him tens of, of yeah. thousands of dollars. My right? God. And obviously he was talking the talk and all of mm. this, but it was like, if you think that him being a billionaire did not contribute to these yeah. women falling in love with him, 100%, you're kidding yourself. Yeah. It did, yeah, yeah. And we, and we can't just be, you know, like just disregard that because it clearly status for men is just like gives you power yeah. Yeah. money gives men power unfortunately yeah. it just does um but i also feel like a lot of men play on that yeah they do because it's almost like yeah you've got money but like you're trying to use your money to control the girl mm. you're using it as a form of manipulation very true does that mean you're not that much of a great person. Yeah, it's Does true. Does that mean you haven't got anything else under your belt? Like This is what I'm saying. Everything comes with a price tag. Yeah. Everything. So most of these people, they always have these red flags. <laughs> <laughs> red flags. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Um, do you think that a woman is more likely to cheat because a guy can provide a certain lifestyle or because a guy is significantly more attractive than her man? What do you think is more likely to make Ooh. her cheat? I'm just going to go off the bat and just say the one who can give her a better lifestyle. Just because mm. I remember watching these like YouTube pranks. Yes. Uh, do you know what I'm on about those YouTube where they prank their girlfriends? Like a guy will go to the YouTuber and yep. be like, can you test my girlfriend? Yes. The guy will act like some super like rich rapper or like yep. businessman or whatever. And the girls just fall for it. And they end up like really like, cheating on their partners yeah like, that's so true that's what came to my mind those that's videos so are wild true. but it's true like i feel like the minute a man sort of leads with his money or he just you know he has a nice car or something like that yeah. a lot of girls and i want to say just weak-minded girls mm. will see that and be like he can give me the life that i want yeah do you think that's do you know what i mean if i say monkey branching no, Do you know what that means? Never heard of that. So you know how monkeys, when they, um, when monkeys are swinging in trees, mm. right? They're holding onto one branch and then they grab the second branch before they let go. Oh, so yes. when a woman finds a guy who's into her could provide that lifestyle, it's almost like she won't break up with her boyfriend. She will establish this relationship first yes. and then break up with oh, him. Oh my God, yes. So is that, it's almost like if it's the lifestyle, if a guy provides a lifestyle, is will she monkey branch to that relationship? Whereas the really, really hot guy, it's like, I'm just going to sleep with you that night. And then- Yeah. Yeah. Does so that make the sense? really hot guy would be like, yeah, probably just a bit of fun. Just a or fling. Just a little fling. Um, maybe she's not getting 
something specific from her partner. Maybe her partner's not going in the gym. Maybe he's not that kind of, he doesn't look the same as that guy. Then yeah, that might be like a little sort of one night fling. Yeah. But the lifestyle one, that one's like, yeah, I've got to really keep him. I have to keep him. Yeah, because that, yeah. that one's like a real sort of. That's your out. Do you think if a woman is, um, do you think if she's in love with, with her man, mm. that she can be open to that? Do you think, do you think that's always going to be a temptation for a woman? Or do you think the temp whether it's a temptation is really down to how she feels about her partner? No, I don't think it's going to be. I think it's only a temptation if you're not getting something from your relationship. Mm. I think it's a temptation if there is a lot of things missing in your relationship or there are things that your partner is not providing that you need Right. Then yes, but I think if a woman is happy, she's in a loving, healthy relationship where there is like a good balance of masculine and feminine. Yeah. He is a provider. He is like tending to your needs and all this stuff. It, it's like, what more do you want? That's, you know, emotional security, financial security, if that yeah. matters to you as a woman. And that's it really. Yeah. So I don't think they would be tempted. I feel like women, women are emotional. You got, you sure. got to remember. So when women cheat, there's like a deeper reason there. Yeah. They're not I think just, that's fair. they're Usually, not yeah. like, I know that women have one night stands and things like that, but it's, it's not that common that they'll just be cheating for as a one off yeah. or random. Yeah, that's if they're true. cheating, there's something wrong there. There's something deeper going on there. Mm. Um, they're not happy. And they have to find out why they're not happy. Yeah. So no, there's not going to be temptation if you're fully secure and in love with your partner. Yeah. Um, like I go out with my friends all the time. And, you know, my friends ask me this question sometimes. They're like, you must like go to these red carpets and you go to these high profile industry, you know, parties and things like that. And yeah. you, you meet celebs all the time. You meet actors, all these people. Do you not? For a second thing, oh my God, and I'm my partner's like different and why am I not with this guy? Yes. And my answer is no. Mm. No, like that does not even cross my mind. And in fact, I don't even in, like involve myself in that. Like I don't even allow myself to go into that. I don't sit there and go, oh my God, the grass may be greener on the other side. Yeah. Because I'm so happy and content and at peace with where I'm at in life. It's yeah. almost like nothing can shift me. Yeah, of But course. in order to get to that place as a woman, I do feel like you need to maybe dabble. You do need to maybe mm. date the wrong guy. You do, it's life experience. <laughs> I'm not saying go crazy and like, I completely lose the plot yeah. but you need to experience what is out there and you need to go through like maybe I don't want to say a series of bad guys but you need to go through like one or two guys where you're like actually I don't I can't be with someone like this like because you need to get to a place where you are content and a lot of women aren't content it, it they, they have to go through like a series of kind of bad guys to finally get to a a place in their life where they go, actually, I just want to be loved. I want to be happy. I want calm. I don't want the adrenaline rush. I, I get that. I don't want, I actually want the boring guy. That's I, what it is. I get that. But the issue is how men see it is that, oh, you messed with all the bad boys when you right. had all yeah. the chances to have to be with the good guy. And now that you're not getting the attention from those bad boys because you can't really, you can't lock them down anymore or whatever, mm. right? Now you want the good guy when you didn't appreciate it before, it's like, nah, that's yeah. how guys see it. Because, and I understand that. Yeah. Because obviously the girls who wanted the good guy in the first place, yeah. she's married with a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. She would have got yeah. him, you know, straight away. So I hear what you're saying. And then also I just want to ask, is there not a danger of her um, um, generating an appetite for something that the average guy can't fulfill. And I actually say this, this is something women should be conscious of with men. Mm. If a woman's with a man who's very desirable and let's say he's been mm. with many women, right? He's developed an appetite for yeah. sexual variety, which means he is more likely to cheat mm. on you. Mm. That's Absolutely, just what comes with the territory. Yeah. So I say to women, like if you've been with, if you're with a guy and he's been with a lot of women and he's used to indulging in that, just be conscious because he may have an appetite for something that the average guy who maybe couldn't do that yes. is going to be very content with you. Yes. So is there not a danger of a woman building an appetite for that kind of life and those, those things that the average guy will just never fulfill? 
yes, there is. There is a danger of that. And, uh, you know, we'd be lying if we said that wouldn't happen. Yeah. But again, I think it comes down to the individual themselves. Mm. Um, and, you know, I always say this, but I feel like it always comes down to your morals mm. because your morals are, are, the, are the things that say, oh, stop. Yes. You don't believe that's right. You shouldn't do that. Yes. And some people's moral, moral compass is just different. I don't want to say higher or lower. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, of course. We'll say different. Yeah. And therefore my advice to the men is that you've you've really got to know the girl that you're with. Yeah. How is she when you're not around? How can you know that though? You have to involve yourself in her life. Right. So some guys, I feel like they're very naive when they date girls. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're very yeah. naive. And, very and I true. don't know if it's because you just, I guess you guys grew up thinking that women were so pure and just feminine. You're honestly, and just, we, honestly, guys like grow up thinking women beings. can't do any wrong. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then you grow up and then you go, oh, God, they're human they're horrible. beings. <laughs> they're human beings. They yeah, can be shit they too. They make mistakes. Yeah. So I feel like when guys are dating, I think they really need to involve themselves in the girl's life, especially in the early stages. Cause early stages, you really get to know someone. Yes. And you get to get a feel of how she is in a relationship. Is she going to commit? Is she half hearted? What, what type of person she is? Yeah. And so if you involve yourself in her life, you're, you know, I don't want to say checking her social media, but you are, you're keeping in touch with her, you're getting mm. to know her friends. I think that's really important because sometimes when girls are, their morals are not that great, mm. they sometimes keep the guys separate from their life. <laughs> very much so. And it's a very calculated move to sort of- um, What does that look like? How keeping them oh, separate? Oh, I'm not, I'm not comfortable like introducing you to my friends. Yeah, like I just don't do that. Like I don't, uh, I don't want to mix you with my friends, and then you end up never meeting her friends. Because is that is that something girls do? Girls do that. Wow. Girls do that because they're, they're basically they're living another life. Yeah, outside yeah, yeah. Of you. Yeah. That you probably don't know of. So true. So wow. involve yourself in her life. Get to know her friends. Look at her friends. Yeah. That is actually really important. So here's, here's, I don't want to admit it, but. No, I completely agree with you. Now here's the thing. Yeah. Cause you said all your friends are single. Yeah. So if you were single and you were dating a guy and he looked at your friends, would he look at her, your friends and be like, yeah, this is kind of woman that I want to, I want to be involved in, you know, establishing with this woman. Cause she's yeah. like her friends or, cause what, what do you think the reason is between what, like answer that first and I'll ask you something yeah. else. Okay. Well, so my answer to that would be, you would then look at the girl that you're with. Uh, of course. And you would First look at foremost. her views. You would look at her morals. You'd look at her values. Is she sitting there going, yeah, like I want to, I, I think she's right for doing that. Like she rinsed that guy. She did this. Right. Like what is she saying? Like when you're having conversations, like the thing, because people show who they are. They do. Sometimes we just ignore it. Very true. So if you see that she's really agreeing with them, like she's, She's kind of one of those people that like almost like promotes a bit of a single life, mm. like the way she acts, the way she moves. If that's the case, mm. then yeah, you can you can start to get worried then. Cause okay. you could be like, yeah, she kind of is like her friends. No wonder why they're all so close. Yeah. But if she is so opposite to her friends and yeah. you see it and you feel it. Yeah then you know you've got a good one. It's true. But then obviously the question is, why would she be friends with them if she's so not like them? Well, the problem is with girls, we're a little bit more, we're not like you guys. You guys are very realistic. Like mm. if your friend's gaining weight, you would tell your friend, bro, you need to get in the gym. Yeah. Us girls, we're not like that. We sugarcoat everything. We, I don't know, we almost live in fairyland sometimes. <laughs> so like, I don't know if you've ever been on a night out. No, you'll never know because you've never gone in the girls' toilets. But girls like befriend each other in the girls' toilets all the time. Yeah, like, that's I've true. I've got friends on my, Inst like girls on my Instagram who I met in like a girls' toilet on a random night out. Yeah, that's so true. And it's crazy. And I'm like, guys, she's like, oh my God, that. love you, babe. And all this. And it's like, but that's how women are. We yeah. always like, it's like, we want to like, gather each other and like- Join the social community. Yeah, be like, we're women, like girl power. It's, it's crazy. Like, and sometimes you can't even, 
you can't even explain it. Yeah, Cause yeah, like yeah. I had guys in the past who would be like, well, I don't get it. Why are you friends with that girl? And I, and I can't explain why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like, I don't want to say you feel sorry for your friend, but it's almost like there's something about that person that you empath, em, what's the word? Empathize with. Empathize yeah. with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I was living in Dubai, I did have friends who were, I don't want to be horrible, but they were a little bit troubled. Okay. Okay. We'll say yeah. troubled. Troubled. <laughs> They've been through a lot. Okay. Okay. And I used to get asked this question, why are you friends with them? And it's because women are so used to being nurturing. We almost like sometimes mm. feel sorry for that girl. Right. We're like, oh, she's actually a really nice girl. Like, honestly, give her a chance. But guys see through the bullshit. <laughs> They're like, no, she's not a good friend. She's Trust trouble. me. But girls like, no, no, no. Honestly, babe, she's been through a lot and you don't understand what happened to her in her last relationship. That's how we are. Yeah. But in a way that's, that's a beautiful thing about women because we see the best in people. I agree. And that's something that you're going to want in your life as a man. I but get that. Do you think women are only like that with female friends, not male friends? That level of empathy. Oh, um, I feel like it's more the girls. Yeah. 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 Why do you think that is? Um, I think because women expect men to be tough. First. And so we almost like, feel like, oh my God, why, why is the guy getting emotional? It's almost, we don't yeah. have that same sympathy for the man that we have for the girl. Yeah. And we'll always take the woman's side. Yeah. <laughs> it was just so funny. Like, <laughs> like I've been in arguments before where my partner would be like, no, babe, it's about what's right or wrong. And I'd be like, she's been through a lot. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, don't judge my friend. And That's it's so funny. Just, but it's like, I, don't, I can't explain it. It's something that comes over us. It's almost like we feel like as women, we want to protect each other. Yeah. I think a lot. I think it's a lot. It's that sisterhood. Uh, yeah. I think a lot of it, because stereotypically, historically, men have always been the stronger sex. Yeah. How women survived was surviving in groups. Yes. Whereas males have and known to be survive to survive on their own. Yeah. So their strength has always come from individual yeah. individually, whereas women has been by multiple of you. And I think I think that I think it's an evolutionary thing. And that's a big yes. part of it. And it, it makes sense. It, yeah. make, it makes sense. Yeah. And I think I actually think that's a really big reason why women will lie or not tell her girlfriend the truth. Mm because it's going to hurt her and would rather comfort her emotions than comfort the reality of what's going on. Yes. Because it's like, even if you're telling the truth, there's a risk as the woman, you telling the harsh reality to the group could yeah. ostracize you from the group. Yeah. Yes. And you're like, it's not worth it. Exactly I, I, would, I would rather cater yes. and give certain falsehoods to stay part of this group. Absolutely. That's so interesting. Yeah. Why do you think and you don't, not to show, throw any shade on your friends. Yeah. Why do you think you're, you've been in a happy, great relationship and they're still single? What do you think they're missing that you have <sighs> or that you're doing? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Cause they must come to you for advice, no? Cause oh, they're like, oh, the she's- All the time. Yeah, yeah I mean? all the time. Do they take your advice? My friend was sending me like 20 minute voice notes just before I was coming here actually. Oh, really? <laughs> so funny. Um, I feel like, it's it's all about being self-aware mm. and a lot of people are not quite self-aware okay there's people who are very in denial about who they are about their toxic traits right their habits mm. their triggers all this stuff um and obviously you know i can't i can't speak on my friends but i can speak on myself and what i've learned over the years yeah and Personally, for me, I I taught myself how to heal myself, if that makes sense. Like okay. I wanted to heal myself. I started to notice these ba bad patterns in relationships. I, yeah. you know, lack of boundaries, like just not being assertive enough, like these things. I started to really evaluate myself. And sometimes when I speak to my friends, they're just kind of like, oh, He's just an F boy. Yeah. That's it. Finish. End of discussion. Yeah. Then they go into that phase of hating him. Yes. Hating him, hating him, hating men now. I'm hyper independent. I don't need anyone. Yeah. And 
the truth is we all need someone, you mm. know, we really do. And I know, and I'm speaking to myself because like I've been through this where you, you almost like gaslight yourself. You just gaslight yourself. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to be alone. Like I went through a phase where I was like, I'm going to be alone. And I'm just like, I'm probably just going to like freeze my eggs. Like, I don't know, you know, <laughs> yeah, you start researching on Google and it's things true. like that. You're like, no, it's fine. I'm a woman. I have backup plans. Like yeah. you start to gaslight yourself into thinking actually a world where I'm not married. I'm not with kids. I'm not in a relationship. I don't need anyone yeah. just going out, having fun. Cause that's a lot, what a lot of girls think. And really then you start to realize actually, no, I feel yeah. lonely. I yeah. feel lonely. Um, I want someone to share these memories with. I want to have these experiences with someone. I yeah. I want to grow. I want to learn things about myself. I want to be challenged. And yes. you can't do those things by just seeing your friends and going out every Friday night. So true. You have to really, sometimes it hurts. And this is the thing, like people really don't want to get hurt. And yep. sometimes they don't want to get hurt so much to the point where they'll actually stop themselves from even getting into anything. Yeah, of but course. But that's such a bad mentality to have because yeah. what's the point of living life if you've never loved or if you've Facts. never even given a shot at finding love, you yeah. know? So I think the answer to that is that you need to be self-aware. Yeah. Um, and everybody's on their own journey, you know, everyone moves at their own pace. Yes. I, I can't expect my friends to be super self-aware like I am. Like, it took me a long time. Like, I'm 28. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It yeah. took me a really long time. Like, I, I tell my partner all the time, I'm like, Phew. I'm like, I was really childish when I was 23. And he's like, I can imagine. And I was just like, yeah. Like, I was like, <laughs> I, honest, I was now. like, you wouldn't have liked me if you met me when I was like 22, 23. And he just like always looks at me and he's like, wow okay interesting i was like yeah like i had to really grow like yeah. growth yeah growth is a big word here like yeah you have 100%. to grow you have to learn these things about yourself and and the first step of learning these things about yourself is actually acknowledging okay i have some toxic traits i'm not perfect i yeah. have some trauma i have some unprocessed emotions whatever it is i have some emotional baggage whatever yeah. And you need to get to the bottom of it. You need to heal those things. And it doesn't mean, oh, I just need to go see a counselor. I need to be, I need to go therapy. Maybe just heal yourself. I yeah. healed myself. Like I read a lot of self-improvement books. I would listen to podcasts. Yeah. Um, I followed a lot of like trained psychologists on Twitter and things like that. I'd read threads. Yeah. And so I educated myself on things and I really got to know who I was. And I realized the reason why I was making all these mistakes is because- I had this issue where I couldn't be vulnerable. Yeah. That's why I led with my successful career and yeah. who I am and all these achievements because yeah. I didn't want to be vulnerable. I didn't want to get hurt. And it wasn't until I went through all this that I was actually fully at a point in my life where I was like, oh my God, I know who I am. Yeah. And now I'm allowing space for the person to come into my life. 100%. And I'm going to let him see me. This yeah. time, like, I'm not gonna. And it takes courage. I'm not gonna close the blinds this time. I'm really gonna let him see me, and it I takes don't courage. care. And it's almost like you. We have to accept that letting letting them see who we are. Mm. That's no guarantee that they'll accept it, and that's okay. Like we have to accept that it may not turn out great exactly. by us doing this, but that doesn't mean it's the wrong thing. Exactly. Um, and I completely agree in terms of you know not not to bring a, a downer on this, but it's coming up to the year anniversary that I lost my dad, right? I'm really sorry. To and that. I appreciate I've that. I've also lost my father as well. So I really? know that wound that just never goes away. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, you know, and things, I've been very blessed in my journey. Things have been going well, but I, one thing that it really, and I've always been close to my family. I was very close with him. Yeah. But one thing that I definitely learned from that, that I never, I think acknowledged is that it is our connections with people that enrich his life. It re like you can have all the success exactly. and stuff in the world, but without those relationships, like yeah. nobody ever sits on a deathbed going, I regret not making more money. Exactly. It's always, I regret not spending time with my parents. I regret exactly. not spending time with my children. Yeah. It's even like my cousin just had a baby recently. He's like a brother to me. They've got their naming ceremony next week. Oh. And they're like, oh, can you be there? And I checked and I'm meant to be working. Yeah. And I was like, oh no. And then literally 20 minutes later, I was like, what am I doing? 
Like this is the first baby of that generation, yeah. our family. I just te- emailed work. I was like, I'm not coming That's in that day it. and I'm going to be there. Yeah. And it's, it's really the relationships yeah. that we have 100%. that enriches life. And I think, I think the sooner we know that. And I think the reason it's hard for people to admit that sometimes is because it sets like what, like wanting a man or wanting a woman, right? Wanting a relationship. Yes. It sets the conditions for failure. Yes. And we don't like to feel that we've, that we're failing in something, exactly. right? Exactly. We don't like yeah. to feel that we're failing, but it's one step at a time. 100%. It's one step at and a time. I, and I just want to sort of go back to what you were saying about how the relationships in our lives really matter. Yes. I heard they did like a study recently. Did you hear about this? That they yeah. were looking at the sort of effect and the impact that the relationships that we have on our, like in our lives, on our health. And mm. they found, did yeah. you read about this? Yes. It matters. It matters. It really affects your health. Not only your mental health, your actual your physical health. Your actual physical health. health. Yeah. That's mad. Like if you have richer connections in your life, yeah. you're statistically more likely to live longer and be healthy. It's true. It's mad. So if we know that, let's nurture those relationships that we have and really like- Let's admit that it's okay to be like, this is what I want. Yeah. And I don't have it right now, yeah. but I'm working towards yeah. having it. Do you know what I mean? Let me ask you one more thing to finish off, just yes. to take a shift. Um, <laughs> this is a massive shift. Do you think- that going 50-50, a woman going 50-50 with a guy in her mm. relationship. So the next thing I want to ask you is, can a woman go 50-50 with a guy in the relationship, mm-hmm. go Dutch and still respect him in the being in the leadership position? <sighs> no. No? No. <laughs> Why? I, I just... I, I mean, I can't speak on every woman. Of course. And I can only speak on my myself, but where I'm from and like how I was brought up and like just even looking at men in my family, in my culture, in my country, like that's just not a thing. Right. I remember I asked my mum this question once, like just randomly sitting in the living room and we're like, mum, what do you think about guys going like 50? My mum looked at me like, <laughs> she was like, what? What is this? <laughs> and she was so oblivious to it. She's like, this happened? And it's so funny. That's hilarious. And like me and my brother were just laughing because we were just like, mum really just is like, that would never happen. We don't know what that is. Yeah. I just think it's, it's, and when we hear this, it, it sounds like, oh, the man's always got to be doing things. It sounds really like hard for the man, but it's not mm. even about that. Mm. It's about showing the woman you can take care of her. You can lead, you can provide for her and you can make her feel safe. Mm. Um, and I, I feel that. like when guys sort of say to the girl, oh, let's go 50-50, I don't think they truly respect the girl. I really don't. You think they don't respect the girl? No. What if that's him respecting her as a strong, independent woman who can, you know, look after herself? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Do you know so. It's, it's interesting because I completely get that. But then, and maybe this is obviously an exception to the rule, I get that. But we can, if we look at someone like Martin Luther King, yeah. his wife is actually earning more than him, right? She was earning the money in the household, mm. but obviously he was on a higher purpose and he was definitely in the leadership position in that role. And so it can happen where even if the woman is, out earning the man, he can still have that leadership kind of establishing frame of, and protection, even if it's him managing the money that maybe she's bringing in or something. Right. So it, do you think that's harder for women to do? Or do you think it it, it, it really kind of, he has to kind of be in that holding frame? I'll put frame. it this way. I'll put it this way. If the woman had the choice, she'll always pick the guy who's not making her go 50-50. It's a fair point. So- That's a fair point. It's As true. a guy, just, you know, know yourself. Yeah. Work hard and you'll feel good. Yeah. You'll feel good. As a man, if you take care of that bill, you feel good. It's true. Someone you know? someone did ask me this the other day. It yeah. was like, do you think men and women have to be the where the man's, you know, holding frame and the woman yeah. isn't whatever? And I was like, I'm not going to say that's should for everyone to subscribe to. But even for the man, I think it's in every man's interest if he is that. Yeah. Because the, this might sound harsh, but I think part of the reason a woman doesn't respect a man, mm. especially if he enters her frame, is because he doesn't have he doesn't have authority within the relationship. Yeah. And when you're supposed to be a leader, there's mm. a level of authority that yeah. 
you have that can't be in that leadership yes. position. Yeah. If you've made, moved into her house yeah. and it's her name on the deed, you have no authority in that house, my guy. Yeah. That's her house. I think women, the problem they have with it as well is they almost feel like, well, look, if he's making me go Dutch, yeah. if I'm paying for a lot of my stuff, I'm still doing this, I'm making my way to him, he's not offering to pick me up, he's not, all this stuff, it starts to add up for a woman and they're like, this is going to sound so real and harsh, but Go I'm, I'm going to be honest because this is how women think. Be honest. They're going to be like, what am I actually getting? <laughs> and I'm sorry. It's You're getting a human emotional thing. support and comfort. But as a humans, <laughs> it's like, that's how people think. Yeah. And I feel like the man who is paying, he isn't saying, oh, let's, he's not doing the little awkward conversation. Like, oh, do you, want to go 50 50 you want to split it like it's always such an awkward conversation as well because the girl's like oh i can pay like yeah it's just like the man's just like thank you yeah. takes care of the bill it's so smooth and just so she's like it's I just so goddamn sexy it's just true it's like you feel as a woman you are able to be so in your feminine energy you're like i'm taken care of even if she is like a really successful high earning woman yeah she will still love that yeah, that's and true. And people will act like they don't love it because again, it's this whole narrative of like, I'm independent, boss babe. But yeah. deep down, you crave that. You crave a man taking lead. You mm. crave a man making you feel so safe and secure. When you know he's taking care of the bill, you're like, oh, he <laughs> yeah, actually just, and like you'll go home that day, you'll be like, oh my God, it was actually a really good day. Yeah, you pay for everything. Yeah. That's such, that's a flex for girls. Yeah. And it's not a flex when they come back to the girls and they're like, oh my God, he made me go 50 50. Right. It's just, it's about. Do not, do women not see then a man giving her emotional support and comfort? The thing that a woman would give a man, yeah. right? Let's say we, if we take the relationship, right, of the man is providing frame, he provides for everything, yeah. right? Like you would say, oh, what is the woman providing? What does she get it? What does she yeah. bring into the table, right? Oh, she brings him comfort, emotional support, mm -hmm. all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Do women not value that from a man then? Do <sighs> they, they not value it as much? Yes, they do. But again, women's list of requirements are a little bit longer. <laughs> a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little bit longer. And also um, women are always sort of sizing you up for marriage yeah, in a way. It's just, yeah. it's just in our... The way that we're wired. That makes sense. So even if you're just on a casual date, you think you're just on a casual date. She's looking at you. Oh, is he husband material? Yeah. Oh, we didn't pick up the bill. Oh no, you're not seeing him again. Mm. It's it's just this thing. Like everybody knows their role. As, yeah. a, as a woman, you know your role. As a man, you know the role. And that's why marriages lasted back in the day because everyone just knew their role. You that's know, good point. nobody was trying to like get the upper hand. It's like the man is the boss. Yeah. You know, I'm his wife. He's going to go out and make money and take care of the house and look after me. Yeah. And that's just how it was. And people lived happier then. Yeah. Now it's like the energy balance is off. Yeah. It's off. You've got men showing feminine energy, which is very unattractive to women. Of They're course. very turned off by that. Yeah. Because you'll have, for example, uh, a high earning lawyer. Yes. Who's worked really hard. And she will end up attracting the guy who's like a personal trainer mm. or like, I don't know, like working in Costa as a barista or something like that. And, but, but that guy will have feminine energy and yeah. he'll be a attracted to what that woman has. Yes. Because she's giving off masculine energy. The masculine side. Yeah, hundred percent. That's true. so wrong. And it's funny, I think, and you know how you like, oh, you know, in marriage, like, you know, he's the head, he's the boss and mm. you know, I'm his wife. And I think for a lot of women, they think, oh, well, immediately they think tyrannical mm. they think oh well he's going to tell me what to do i don't have any choice in anything yes. he's yeah. going to control me all of this stuff yeah and i think it's really important to differentiate between having a good leader and a bad leader because when everybody works we mm. all have bosses right yeah we all have a boss yeah. but just because we have one boss who's a bit of a dickhead we don't go oh, okay well boss whoever's in poli the position yeah. of boss is a dickhead because yeah. there's some bosses you're like i love working with this person yeah. i love being on this person's team yeah and so i think I think it's really important for us to differentiate and at least make the point yes. that it's not that a man being a leadership position within your marriage mm. is what makes it tyrannical. It's who the man is. Yes. Did you choose the right boss? Yes, Did you choose right. the right leader? Yes. Um, because with the right guy who yeah. is choosing you because he values you, 
even if he's making the decision, yeah. he wants your input. Yeah. Because exactly. he's like, I'm making the decision for both of us. So yeah. I need to know what you yes. need from this. Yes. So I can make this the right choice. Absolutely. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Listen, Sakena, it's always a pleasure. Thank having you so on. much. For where having me. where can people find you if they want to find you? Uh they can find me on all socials, Instagram, Sakena TV, um, TikTok, Sakena Louisa. Um, and that's it really yeah. come we love it go show us some love guys we love the evolution Yay. you know we love the evolution <laughs> we love it uh, yeah nice go show chat. us some love always yes. always always a nice chat we'll get you on again at some point guys show us some love give us some likes give us some follow thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next episode bye